Happy spring, everyone. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to today's live stream. I'm going live again on YouTube Shorts, as well as on YouTube, LinkedIn, and Facebook. This is Edie Clark, remote video producer and video strategist for service-based entrepreneurs who are stuck and troubled with creating video content for their business and for themselves. Today is the last and fourth week where we're talking about spring related to video creation and video marketing. And I'm gonna share a couple of tips. Um, well, not even really tips, just some, some trends that have been going on. If you have been following me at all for this month or even this year, I made a commitment to myself that I wanted to be more proactive when it came to doing live streams because that was the one area of video creation that for me was something that I was not necessarily chomping at the bit to do. And so I wanted to um, be able to communicate on a more effective basis doing live streams. So this year I started off where I created a planner for all of my video live stream content and I categorized every single month into themes and this month was the theme of springing into action play on the words of spring because it's springtime and so I just related all of that to um, video creation so um, with that said I know that for most of us we have concerns and issues when it comes to um, creating content for our business or for our services. And for uh, most of my clients that I end up getting, one of the biggest number one complaints that they have is, I don't know what to create a video on. And for those of you who are popping in live, please let me know that you're here. Um, I do have a chat in Restream. I'm actually going to be switching to another platform soon, but sometimes I'm not able to see you right away, but I will respond if you give me a little hi and let me know if you have any questions because I'll, I'll definitely um, hopefully address it on the live stream, but if not, I will certainly respond to you. And so with one of the main issues being, I don't know what to talk about in my videos, I kind of wanted to sort of give you some um, idea of what I chose to do for not only this year, but this month, and how I chose to come up with the content that I'm going to be talking about. So for the month of March, I wanted it to be spring related, so I themed it spring into action and so today is going to be the fourth video or live stream that i'm going to be doing on that topic i did spring content planning where i just talked about what i was planning to create for the spring i did a spring cleaning of my channel where i revamped and that's something that you should do you don't have to wait until the spring but i changed out my uh, channel art which i hadn't done in probably about two or three years um, and revamped a couple of things. I do still plan on um, redoing my welcome trailer. And then last week I did spring into action and overcome procrastination in video creation because a lot of us are like, okay, I'll do that later. And you just keep putting it off and putting it off. And then today is all about spring trends in video marketing. <clears throat> and so with that said, with that theme for today, um, my question was, okay, do I want to just sort of talk about what I've been doing, which is basically a play on the words of spring. And, you know, it's a time for renewal. It's a time for fresh starts because I did talk about in the content planning um, live stream, I talked about, you know, if you didn't start off the year the way that you wanted, now is a time for you to have a fresh start and for you to figure out exactly what kind of content you want to create from spring onto the rest of the year. Um, you could talk about, you know, services or um, products that you're going to be releasing either now or a little bit later on, as well as you could sort of continue on the spring cleaning theme that I also did 
Mine was related to my YouTube channel, but it depends on what niche you're in and what you want to talk about. So you can do those, but since I kind of touched on those already, what I wanted to talk about today with the spring trends is what have I been noticing on YouTube or in social media in general in terms of how we're creating our content. And with these trends, I'm going to forewarn you, they're not like things that have never been seen before. I don't have a crystal ball to tell you what's going to be hot so that you can jump onto that bandwagon. But I will just share things that I've been noticing that have definitely been a change in the past few months. And so that's something that we can um, consider doing so that we can decide whether or not that's something that fits into what we're going to be creating for our business. And so there are five areas that I want to talk about. And then in some instances, I'm going to be sharing my screen so that you can see what I'm talking about, or at least examples of what I'm talking about. So trend number one, which isn't really a trend, it's been around for quite some time, and that's short form video content. Um, obviously, ever since TikTok, YouTube Shorts, everybody, you know, Instagram, everybody is allowing for short form and enabling and encouraging short form video content to be um, a type of content that's used on their platforms. Typically, this is going to be content that is going to be in your feed because it is while people are scrolling that people are going to come across this content. It needs to be short, ergo short form content, and it needs to be engaging something that's going to be able to stop hopefully the person from scrolling so that they can look at it um, long enough to get an understanding of what it's going to be about. Now, obviously, that's content that's up to a minute long, not anything longer than that. And typically, the content is in a vertical, not typically, it's 99.9% .9 of the time in a vertical format, similar to the way that I am coming to you on YouTube Shorts right now. So I am going to share my screen in a second so that you can see some examples. But one of the things that, you know, usually people will then ask is, okay, well, what kinds of content am I going to create if I'm going to do short form? And short form can really run the gamut in terms of the types of content. It can be a review video where you're giving your feedback on a particular product or even a service. You can do explainer videos. You can do FAQ videos where you're just answering one question or perhaps even answering multiple questions within um, the span of about a minute. You can even do educational or informational videos where you're giving someone either in a listicle format, like five things, and then you just go through each one of them. Again, it's really amazing how much content you can um, give to them in under uh, 60 seconds. So you can do all of those types of videos and I'm going to share my screen right now so that you can see um, one of the examples. So this is um, someone by the name of Nisha on um, YouTube and she is doing a listicle but educational and informational video in under 60 seconds. Um, oh, I hope you can hear it, but if you can't, it doesn't matter. I don't remember if I shared the audio for this. But essentially, she's giving um, financial information that is beneficial to her ideal audience, and she's listing them off. So she's basically talking about six things to do um, for uh, as you get paid, what your payday routine should be. And so she's saying that you should calculate things, you should pay off your debt, you should save one month's living. So she's giving you step-by-step -step instructions on what you should be doing. So this is extremely educational as well as informational. Because of the way that this is structured, more often than not, either her viewers are going to stop and pause um, the video so that they can write down or they're going to repeatedly look at it. So this is definitely a way that you can take advantage of the short form sort of phenomenon in terms of being able to, con to create content that's educational, that's informational, and that at the same time is going to um, help your audience. The other trend that I've noticed 
with shorts is this trend. Normally it's with food, but it doesn't always have to be with food. And it's looping videos. These are videos that are specifically edited in a way so that it looks like it's on this never ending loop and it just keeps starting over and over again. So basically it starts the way that it ends, but the way that it, it comes across, you don't know what's the beginning, what's the end of the video. So in this particular example, they showed the end product. Now she's going through the step-by-steps of what she's doing to create that end product. And she's talking over the video and telling you what she's doing. So now we're coming up to the end. She's going to bake this. And this is how it starts again after she cuts it. And boom, it starts again. She's putting it on there. And then boom, it goes into the video all over again. Um, so that's definitely something that has been trending for the past few months. These are not videos that you're going to be able to create from repurposing a long form. These are being created custom for shorts and they're putting them, you know, on all of the various shorts platform. Again, this is for the purpose of creating that bingeability, if that's a word. Um, where you're going to be able to get the person to look at the video multiple times, either because they're trying to write down, they're finding it fascinating, they, they think that it's a really interesting video to watch because they're just like, oh, that looks so good, you know? And so that is definitely a trend that's happening. But like I said before, it's not only happening for food, it's actually happening in other categories as well. You just have to be creative in the way that you're creating them. The last one um, is fairly new and there, but at the same time, not so much. If you can hear the video, it actually has no audio um, on it in terms of narration. There's music, but these are silent videos. And so these are just showing you step by step what they're doing. In this instance, it's making um, a hazel, a dreamy hazelnut latte. And I should be giving everybody credit. Let me uh, say Nutrient Matters was uh, the rotisserie um, chicken one. And then this one is Latte Art City is um, the one that did this short where they're showing how to do this um, latte. Again, it's on a loop and it is a silent video because they don't have any audio narr narration. So there's no script involved. They're not walking you through anything. It's just purely showing you um, exactly what you need to do with regards to, I'm going to check to see if I have any chats. Oh, hi, Dion Marie. Thank you. First time on my channel. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you. Um, so that's another type of video that you can use and utilize in the event that you want to go the YouTube shorts or just shorts. I shouldn't say YouTube shorts because it can be TikTok. And the great thing about all of these vertical videos is that every single platform, Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, Pinterest, everybody takes this format. So you can create it specifically for TikTok or you can create it specifically for YouTube, but you'll be able to use it on other platforms as well. So I highly recommend that you consider doing shorts. You don't have to only do the three that I recommended um, or that I'm featuring. I'm not necessarily recommending them. I'm just featuring them. You should get into the habit of creating shorts and they can be repurposed shorts from your long form videos, but these are custom videos that I think really work well as far as that's concerned. So the second category of um, videos that I've been seeing that are trending and again, it's not like these, this is the first time that this has been happening, are user generated um, videos. So user generated videos are typically videos, and this one comes courtesy of Cleaning with Gabby, where they're using a product and they're showing you how they're using that product to clean, to cook something, whatever um, it may be used for. They're using it and they're showing you how good this product is. In this particular example, not necessarily all of them have paid promotion. So they were actually paid by the brand. In this instance, not all videos are necessarily like this, but they usually will have 
links affiliated with the long form where you can um, purchase the product and that that's what would be the case for this one. But other than that, there is another one that I have, which I do not believe has paid um, promotion and it does not. This is Operation Nikki. And she does on her channel for her shorts, she features a lot of different products for whatever her routines are. So this is her nighttime or bedtime routine. And she's showing an array of different products that she uses uses and how she uses them. So user generated content is definitely something that works both from if you're a brand and you want your product to be used, or if you are a content creator and you wanna show how you're using a particular brand and you can then be an affiliate marketer for that brand by showcasing exactly how you use the product what your thoughts are. This all has voiceover on it <clears throat> as well. And then you can have links um, on there in reference to the kinds of, um, you know, the products that you're gonna be using. So this lends itself well for any kind of reviews that you're using or how to use a product or um, just using the product and showing people that this product really works for me and this is what it was able to achieve. The fourth kind of video is what we're doing right now. I am going live on all of my um, regular platforms, LinkedIn, Facebook, and YouTube, as well as I'm going live on YouTube Shorts. So live streaming has been around since the mid 2000s. I wanna think probably 2011-ish, um, uh, like when Periscope, maybe it was a little later than that. Um, so that's not new, but more and more people are certainly branching out and doing live streams. I've challenged myself to do live streams a little bit more because that is not something that I was doing. YouTube Shorts just last month, I believe, came out with being able to live stream on YouTube Shorts, which is what I'm doing simultaneously. Um, so that is definitely something that's trending and that's new. And my experience it's been hit and miss. I have some people that pop up on YouTube Shorts. Sometimes I have more people on YouTube Shorts than I have um, watching me on LinkedIn, Facebook, or on YouTube on uh, the landscape. So it all, it's going to vary. And it's really, again, people that are scrolling through the YouTube Shorts feed, and then they just scroll over and they look at everybody that's going live and they just stop. You know, some people are doing like behind the scenes. You're just watching them as they go about their day. Some people are doing what I'm doing. Um, so it's all gonna vary. And I don't in advance announce that I'm going to go live on YouTube Shorts. So that is something that I will probably play around with to see if that affects it as well. But doing live streaming just allows you to be able to get to your audience um, faster and easier. And I'm actually right now switching because I want to go on to my channel really quickly. It's hard to monitor um, the activity or if anybody is on your channel when you are using a third party application and you're going live in multiple um, places at the same time. So I'm just trying right now to see if I have, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to um, do any comments. Okay, good, it's on mute. So I'm just checking to see um, who is on and um, I'll go on to LinkedIn later and see who's on there as well. But live streaming is definitely an opportunity for you to be able to engage um, live with your audience. So that's definitely something that you may want to consider doing. Um, it also, for me, live streaming was beneficial for me to do because it helped me to get used to talking to the camera and not being obsessed with, oh my God, I flubbed a line. I need to start all over again. That tends to be the case when, at least I'm speaking for myself, when I pre-record my videos, I'm more read it. I'm, 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 I know that if I'm recording my videos, I have the option of starting and stopping. 
And with live streaming, I know that I can't. So with live streaming, it really allows me to get more comfortable with being able to make mistakes and not really worry about it. So it builds a confidence that you wouldn't ordinarily get from just doing regular videos unless you're doing videos like literally on a daily basis. Um, and if that's not the case, then I would highly recommend um, incorporating live streaming. And it does not matter whether people are on live or if they um, see you on the replay. So I would personally highly recommend that you do it because for me, it really and truly has helped me um, just get more comfortable. And that's the main thing that I think is really necessary when it comes to video is that it allows you to get more comfortable with the way that you communicate and that you share your thoughts online and you don't have to obsess over, um, oh, I didn't say that right or I should have done this, that or the other. It's like, you know, you're human and it shouldn't be the end of the world if you make a mistake, you know, you're human. So I'm going on really quickly just to see if there's any comments on um, LinkedIn because I'm not, I'm, it looks like I'm only seeing YouTube comments directly in, in Restream. So I just wanted to share, uh, check really quick on that. Now, type number four is my absolute favorite and that's AI, anything artificial intelligence with regards to video. And when it comes to AI, one of the key things that I definitely am um, a proponent of is sharing with my audience tools and platforms that make um, creating videos using AI really, really simple and easy. And AI can help you with video from brainstorming all the way to repurposing your video once you've created it. So it's in every single aspect of video creation, of video marketing, of um, video strategy, you can utilize AI, whether you're utilizing the brainstorming capabilities of tools like ChatGPT or Gemini or Copilot I'm, I'm dabbling with um, now. I love to use also um, Jasper. Jasper is not only a tool that I use for brainstorming, but I also use it for creating my um, outlines or my scripts or things of that nature. So you can use it for brainstorming, you can use it for copywriting, you can use it to um, create your videos, you can use it, and this is one of the tools that you can use to create videos. Wibbits is not a product that a lot of people um, talk about. It's a product that I've known about for almost 10 years. I wanna think I first learned about it in 2015. Um, and it is great for people that not everybody can use Wibbits, but Wibbits is a platform. It was one of the first platforms that I ever encountered that had a lot of AI features within it. But what I like about it is that it does have some ready to use videos, and this is just one aspect of the way that you can use it. Um, but it does have some ready to use videos based on your category of um, expertise. So if you are a lifestyle um, blogger or if you're someone that's into helping people, whether it's life coaching or just in how to have a healthier life, things of that nature, Wibbits can help you. If you're someone that is a reporter of information with regards to celebrity and entertainment, this can help you. If you're somebody that likes to convey information about um, politics or about technology or about news, this is definitely a platform that can help you because it comes up with, um, it posts on a daily basis, pre-made videos that all you need to do once you have an account is rebrand it with your colors and your logo and then you can schedule it or you can download it and then um, schedule it onto your own social media platform. So this is definitely a tool that I like to talk about because I'm, I am a, a huge fan about it. on it. I don't use it as much because I can only look under technology and it's usually gonna have to be something video related that's gonna let me use utilize it. Kapwing is another tool that I 
absolutely love. Um, it is a great tool to use if you want to create and edit your videos. Um, it also has AI features that allow you to, through a prompt, create videos um, automatically as well. And it has a bevy of um, footage as well as images that you can use as B-roll in order to really tell the story of your um, whatever the video is that you want to create. So I highly recommend um, utilizing this. They have a lot of things that allow you to edit your videos really quickly. They have a feature called Smart Cut, which once you upload the video, you're able to activate it and it will get rid of all of the pauses or the silences and it does give you control over how quick those edits are or how spaced apart they are. So you can control that um, as opposed to there are some platforms where it just does it automatically and you have no control over how many cuts they um, allow for. You can reformat your videos so that you can really and easily and effortlessly uh, repurpose your content for either you know YouTube or Instagram or, or if you want to make it vertical they have the ability for you to upload a long form video here's the smart cut that I was talking about um, you can create videos from long form by having it repurpose the content for you so it acts as a you know, if anybody uses video.ai or if they use um, uh, Munch or if they use Opus Clip, it can do all of that for you. So Capwing is, or Capwing, is an all-encompassing um, tool that allows you to do literally everything. You can create your videos, you can edit your videos, you can get your captions on it, you can repurpose your content, you can do literally everything within this one, <coughs> excuse me, um, tool. Jasper is the um, tool that I mentioned that I use whenever I am needing to uh, write copy in particular. If I need to write copy for a blog post or if I need to get an idea, I have an idea of something that I want to create and I, knew, I know that it's going to be a live stream. For example, these live streams that I... Um, that I'm doing, I can easily go into and have gone into um, Jasper and said, okay, I wanna create a live stream about spring trends in video marketing. And then it will ask me a series of questions that I will then fill in the blanks and then it will then produce an outline for my presentation. And then from there, I tweak it and I showcase exactly what it is that I want to showcase and I make it sound a little bit more like me. But one thing I can say about Jasper in comparison to the other platforms is Jasper does ask for a lot of information about you, things that you've written in the past so that it can speak in the same voice that you speak in naturally when you're, um, when you're creating content using the tool. So I highly, highly, highly recommend checking them out. The next one is Opus Clip. If you are someone that either does a lot of live streams and that's basically how you're creating your content or if you're doing podcasts or if you're just creating um, training videos and you wanna repurpose that content, this is definitely a tool that you can use where you can take your long form video and um, sometimes it gives you more than 10 videos, but you can take your long form and then turn that into a short form video that you can use on all of the different platforms. And one thing that they do, and I think pretty much all of the tools that are in this category do this now, is that they will rate the content and give you an idea on a out of 100 as well as on an A to probably F um, scale, how likely it is for your content to go quote unquote viral. They're not banking and guaranteeing that it's gonna go viral, but they're basically giving you enough information to sort of let you know that this has, this is the virality score. This has potential for it to be of interest to your audience. And it breaks it down by telling you whether or not you have a good hook, 
whether there's a good flow, whether there's a potential for engagement, and then also what the virality <laughs> potential um, can be. So that definitely helps as well. And then also with this, you can edit your, your uh, clip even more by adding in B-roll. So if, if you're talking, I'm doing a one minute, let's just say it's only a minute. It's a really good clip, but I'm being very uh, visual with how I'm talking about. I'm talking about, I'm giving a story and I'm talking about these two people and this is what they're doing. And instead of it just being, being a talking head, talking to the camera, you can import it in here and then you can ask it to find B-roll for you and it will find the B-roll. Now, I have to check to see if they've upgraded this, but the last time I used it, you can't move the B-roll from where they place it on the timeline. So that was the only downside about that. But I knew that it was in beta, so hopefully they've been <clears throat> working on that. But these are just all AI features and tools that just can make your life easier. And that's how I see um, AI being incorporated into what we're doing. The next tool is WiseCut. So for those of you who have always been avoiding video because you absolutely hate the concept of editing, WiseCut, and there are other ones that are out there as well, um, comes to your rescue. WiseCut is a platform where you upload your um, long video and it will, you ask, you tell it a couple of things and it will then edit the video for you. Primarily what it's doing is it's incorporating jump cuts. So it's gonna take you from a, um, a wide shot to a close up and it's removing silences. And when you're finished, when it's finished, you review the video. Okay, you like it. No, I wanna change some things around. You can do that. And then you can export the video and it's edited for you and you don't need to go to the expense of hiring an editor or doing anything like that. Um, I will confirm whether or not they've added any new features to the best of my knowledge. You cannot add in B-roll on this. They do do auto -duck ducking, which is basically um, if you're gonna have music underneath your narration, whenever you speak, the music will go down and when there's um, pauses, the music will go up. That's basically what auto docking is. And um, I don't see anything here about B-roll, so I will go into my account um, and double check that. The other thing that a lot of people tend to complain about is, I don't wanna be featured in my video. And so you do have the option of doing faceless videos. That's another trend that has resurrected itself and is coming back, and I should have um, probably brought that out um, earlier is faceless videos is definitely something that you can do. So you can do faceless videos in a number of ways. You can just do it with um, stock footage or stock images, or you can have an AI tool create it for you use, utilizing those, those things. You can use PowerPoint presentations or slide presentations instead. Um, you can do animated. You can do a variety of things where you don't have to show your face. DID is... Um, one of those where you can still, you can use it for the avatar. They have a lot of library, uh, uh, they have a library of avatars that you can use to represent you, or you can actually utilize your own image. So I did a video not too long ago. It's actually a thank you video for, um, one of my pages where um, I hey there. took up. I just wanted to take a oh, moment to personally thank you. Mute this. Um, I took a photo of myself and I uploaded um, narration and I had that um, basically uploaded into DID and they morphed, as you can see, they morphed my mouth. They gave me the ability to blink and they moved my head. This is a still photograph of me just smiling and they were able to do that with it. Now it does look a little freaky. It probably will freak the hell out of some people, but it is the direction that we're going in. Some people be like, oh my God, I would not want that to be done. Anybody could take my photograph and do that. 
technically yes but i'm hoping that guardrails are going to be placed in there and they'll you'll have the ability to have some control i'm showing you this just to show you where this technology is going you don't have to do this you can use an avatar of a joe blow you know they have a lot of just anonymous images of people and there are even ways for you to create people that don't exist you can create photographs of people that don't exist and you can use that instead i personally wanted to use myself because it was a thank you video that i was using on one of my pages and i wanted my audience to see me so that's the reason why i opted to do that but this is just sort of an example of where we are going in the future in regards to ai so keep your eye out for all of these types of capabilities there's even um, ai tools not really in love with them yet that can create custom thumbnails for your youtube videos so literally everything soup to nuts with regards to video creation and video marketing on youtube can be created using an ai tool so the fifth and final area I'm way over time because i don't like to go this long um, is a trend that is trending in the past few months or a couple of months and that's in editing and what it really is and i wanted to share with you um, i typed in the search bar editing style i've been seeing this blowing up on youtube in um, almost every time i go on to my youtube channel and part of that is because i'm obviously in the video niche but Part of that is because there's a lot of videos that have been coming out on this. And so the editing style in particular that they're talking about is saying less is more. That ironically was always my philosophy. I was not someone that was into a lot of fast cuts. I don't know if any of you ever noticed that a lot of times there would be these like really quick jump cuts that kind of had your head spinning. And I think it was because the audience at the time that was skewing more younger wanted to get the information as quickly as possible. So they needed every to be removed <laughs> and they wanted to have, you know, the movement of the camera, you know, everything needed to be sort of very staccato, if you will. And so now they're basically, if you can tell from his thumbnail, the, the top th thumbnail, this one shows it as well. They're going from a bajillion different um, cuts to a much more streamlined method of editing. My editing has always looked like the one on the on the right. It's always been streamlined. I've never done the bajillion and one different um, editing cuts. So that is definitely something that is trending um, more because live streaming um, sort of lends itself to this too that kind of editing the the slower paced editing lends itself better to authenticity and that's what's really trending right now is the need for us as creators as for us as entrepreneurs who are sharing our knowledge and our expertise online to be more authentic that was definitely one of the keys of why i wanted to do live streaming because you were going to see me raw and you know making mistakes and you know flubbing scrolling you know what i'm doing if you ever see my eyes down is i'm looking at my outline to make sure that i'm on track in terms of what i wanted to talk about so all of that is a, le a ability to make us a bit more authentic you see the real me i'm sharing with you the trials and tribulations the experience the, the experiences that i've had the reasons why i'm doing things this is definitely something that really works with your audience. They want to see the real you. They want not just to see the polished, good looking, oh, that was so glossy and perfect. They want to see who you are as, an, um, as a creator or as an entrepreneur that they're looking to for advice and for information based on whatever the, the subject matter that you happen to be an expert in is so that is it that was all five so less editing using ai to create your videos user generated videos live streaming 
And um, the fifth one was short, short form content that you can use on all areas of your platforms. So if you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments. I'm sorry that I haven't, I only saw Dion Marie um, come up on uh, Restream. And when I went into LinkedIn, I didn't see it and I didn't have a chance to open up both of my Facebooks. So if you do have any questions, please post them in the comments below. I'm here every week. I'm gonna be, my goal is to be here every Wednesday. Typically at 1 p.m. Eastern time, I always schedule in advance for the month. Next month, I am not gonna be here at one. I'm either gonna come in at 12 or at two because I have an, uh, an engagement that I'm doing at 1 p.m. that I want to do since it's the first Wednesday of each month is this um, particular engagement. So other than that, I'm always here on Wednesdays at 1 p.m. If you have any topics that you would like me to cover, please post them in the comments. I will add them to my content planner and let you know when I'm going to cover that. If it's something that's urgent that you want me to do, then let me know that as well. If you would rather me spend my time um, instead of, oh, let me get myself back on full camera. If there is something that you would rather me show you so doing a show and tell like a tutorial a live tutorial i can do that as well let me know what the platform is but in the meantime i want you to know that i am going to be doing workshops free workshops that i am co-hosting with brands so that you can see how i use that tool and then they'll be on the call as well to show you overall what you can do all of the different things that you can do with that platform or that tool and then answer any questions that you may have i've done one already last month with cast magic which is a platform that i use to repurpose all of my live streams i'm able to create blogs from it it takes these live streams and it gives me a lot of written content it does not repurpose and spit out a video but it does spit out um blog posts um social media posts uh, newsletters, emails, a uh, slew of things, threads, um, tweets, whatever it is that you need in a written form, it does do that. So I did that workshop back in February. I have another one coming up in April. April 16th is going to be Social B. Social B is my social media management tool of choice. It is a phenomenal platform that I have been using. Oh gosh for probably eight years now that I use to manage all of my social media. It keeps me present. It keeps me up to date in having it spitting out my content based on the categories that I create. It's a really phenomenal platform. So I'm going to be partnering with them and we're going to come and do a one hour free workshop on August. So August on April 16th at 1 PM. I don't even know what day of the week it is, but I think it's a Tuesday at 1 p.m. You have to register for that. I'm going to be putting the link in this video, um, but I'm also going to be promoting it on all of my platforms. So hopefully I will see you there so that you can learn about Social Bee and how I use it to market my company. So I'll see you next time. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, feel free to subscribe so that you can get notified when I'm going to be going live because I do schedule these. I'll probably be scheduling my April ones in the next couple of days and um, you'll be able to get notified for each one of those before I go live. So thank you as always for watching. I truly appreciate the time that you take to be here with me and let me know if you have any questions. And I will see you next month in April for, I think April's theme is creative challenges, if I remember correctly. Um, but you'll be getting notified on what that theme is and all of the videos that I will be creating then. So until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you later. Bye.